In June 2024, Energy Singularity, a fusion energy company based in China, announced that it had built the world's first high-temperature superconducting tokamak, a nuclear fusion reactor. Dubbed HH70, the tokamak fusion reactor device is located in Shanghai and is much smaller and cheaper to build than conventional fusion reactors. Energy Singularity further claimed that its reactor can work at just 2% of the volume of conventional fusion reactors, making them easier to build and operate. So, the next question is whether nuclear fusion energy is ready to take on the world. Nuclear fusion is the process where two or more atomic nuclei are fused to form another nuclei, releasing large amounts of energy. The concept was first proposed by William Draper Harkins, an American physicist, in 1915. In 1921, British astronomer and physicist Arthur Eddington proposed that our sun makes energy by fusing hydrogen nuclei into helium. This could provide limitless energy if replicated on Earth, since hydrogen is abundantly available. The approach is also considered much safer since it produces no radioactive byproducts. However, nuclear fission has been successful. Despite producing waste that remains radioactive for millions of years, nuclear fission technology supplies 20% of electricity in the US today. This is despite fission technology being discovered nearly two decades after Eddington found how nuclear fusion worked. It might seem like nuclear fusion has a starter problem, and quite literally, it does. To achieve a nuclear fusion reaction, researchers replicate the conditions on the Sun, where plasma, the fourth state of matter consisting of atomic nuclei and free ions, can fuse hydrogen isotopes to make helium. When hydrogen atoms are first brought together, their electrostatic forces repel each other. However, when the nuclei of the atoms get close enough, the stronger nuclear force can act and fuse them, giving rise to a helium nucleus or an alpha particle consisting of two protons and two neutrons. The mass of a helium nucleus is slightly less than the sum of the masses of the two hydrogen nuclei fused together. The difference in this mass is released as energy which can be harnessed to generate electricity. The plasma cools when the energy is released, slowing down fusion reactions. The newly formed helium nucleus provides heating power for the reaction. If the heating power exceeds the plasma's cooling down, a state called ignition is reached, where the reaction becomes self-sustaining and can run continuously to generate energy. Reaching ignition had been a major hurdle for nuclear fusion technology until recently. In December 2022, the National Ignition Facility, or NIF, at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in the US, surpassed the ignition threshold for the first time in history. The team produced 3.15 megajoules of energy output from a fusion reaction after spending 2.05 megajoules powering it. Over the next few months, the researchers achieved 3.88 megajoules of output with the same input energy, the highest on record so far. NIF's recent success is a boost in the arm of nuclear fusion technology and gives further hope to a host of private companies in the market. The U.S. is home to over 40 companies that have cumulatively raised more than $6 billion in investment and are using different methods to achieve ignition and then commercial production of fusion energy. Some of these companies also had to cease operations or even cancel reactor development in recent years, raising doubts about the viability of nuclear fusion. As a technology, nuclear fusion has always been two to three decades away from commercialization. Still, recent developments in the field have raised hopes that the technology could be deployed in less than a decade from now. 
It is not just the US that has ambitious expectations from nuclear fusion. The UK and China have also made major advances in recent times. The Joint European Taurus, or JET, is a fusion research facility based near Oxford in the UK that began operations in 1983. It was the first fusion reactor to use hydrogen isotope tritium as a fuel, and in 1997 set a record for generating 16 megawatts of power after injecting 24 megawatts of heat into the reactor. Earlier this year, the JET facility reached another record of generating 69 megajoules of energy by burning just 0.2 milligrams of fuel. Not only would this energy be sufficient to power 12,000 homes and was generated in just five seconds, demonstrating the potential of fusion energy. Unfortunately, JET's recent record came through in the same month. It was scheduled for decommissioning. Even though the fusion reactor underwent frequent upgrades in its long service, after serving for 40 years, the reactor at JET can no longer support the advances in fusion technology and is being decommissioned. On the other side of the globe, Japan built the world's largest fusion reactor and achieved its first plasma in November 2023. Dubbed JT-60SA, the construction and testing of the fusion reactor took 15 years to complete, where plasma temperatures can reach 200 million degrees Celsius and reaction can be maintained for 100 seconds. Although Germany and South Korea have also invested in developing nuclear fusion technology, China has had more success in this area. Last year, the Experimental Advanced Superconducting Tokamak, or EAST, fusion reactor in Hefei, China, achieved a milestone by remaining operational for 403 seconds. Popularly known as China's Artificial Sun, this reactor has been operational since 2006 and aims to achieve continuous operation for over 1,000 seconds. Another important feature of the East Fusion Reactor is its relatively low construction cost. Official estimates peg the construction costs of the East Fusion Reactor at 37 million US dollars, approximately one fifteenth of what it costs other countries to build a similar scaled setup. Building on East's success, the Asian country is also working on building the China Fusion Engineering Test Reactor, or CFTER, the next generation of its artificial sun, and what it touts to be the world's first fusion energy demonstrator. Although much of the effort in developing nuclear fusion technology is resting on individual nations, there is also a global push to make fusion energy a reality. The International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or ITER, is a multinational megaproject involving 35 countries working collaboratively to realize the dream of fusion-based energy. Member nations for the project include China, India, the European Union, Japan, South Korea, Russia and the US, while the project construction is underway in Cadarache in southern France. Member nations have set up ITER projects in their own countries to contribute to the design, construction or operation of the ITER plant. This makes the project one of the most extensive human collaborations, exceeding the International Space Station and the Large Hadron Collider. The ITER facility is designed to hold six times the plasma volume of the Japanese JT-60SA, making it the largest of the 100 fusion reactors built in the past seven decades. The project was planned to attain its first plasma by 2025, but delays due to several issues, including the COVID-19 pandemic, have meant that the first plasma may only be achieved by 2035. When ready, the facility is designed to use 300 megawatts of electrical power to make the plasma absorb 50 megawatts of heat and generate 500 megawatts of heat post-fusion for 400 to 600 seconds. 
During these operations, ITER reactor will produce magnetic energy of 41 gigajoules, which will be 250,000 times greater than that of the Earth. The plasma current will also peak at 15 million amperes, setting a record for fusion reactors. For calculation purposes, the ratio of heat input to heat output, measured as Q, would be 10 for ITER. In comparison, the NIF breakthrough in 2022 had a Q value of just 1.5. Theoretically, the heat output from ITER, if connected to the grid, could generate 200 megawatts of continuous power, enough to power 200,000 homes. However, since the reactor is experimental, this heat will be vented out instead. As an experimental reactor, ITER is not designed to produce electricity, but to demonstrate that fusion technology is safe, can be operated at a large scale, and can produce more thermal output than what is put in. Additionally, it provides a testing ground for various components of the large nuclear fusion reactor, such as cooling systems, remote maintenance, control and diagnostic systems, and much more. The total project cost, including construction and operations at ITER, is estimated to be between 45 and 65 billion dollars, making it the most extensive science experiment ever. With billions poured into a single project, the gains must be immense. Nuclear fusion technology does not disappoint on that front. Unlike its fission counterpart, nuclear fusion technology does not produce radioactive waste that must be dealt with after the reaction. Instead, it produces inert helium gas that can be safely released into the environment without any processing. Nuclear fusion is also highly energy efficient when compared to fossil fuels. Just 2.2 pounds or 1 kilogram of nuclear fusion fuel can produce the same amount of energy as 22 million pounds or 10 million kilos of fossil fuel. The energy generation process is also free of carbon emissions, a major concern with fossil fuels. One gigawatt fusion power plant would need less than one ton of fuel during a year's operation. More importantly, the fuel needed for nuclear fusion is widely available. Deuterium can be extracted from water, an abundant resource on the planet, whereas tritium can be extracted by processing lithium. Even after the widespread adoption of nuclear fusion technology, the amount of fuel required per year will be minimal and will not raise the energy security concern for thousands of years. Nuclear fusion technology is an extremely useful asset as countries look for cleaner ways to meet their energy demands and attain net zero emissions without compromising on their growth. Since nuclear fusion reactions are difficult to initiate and sustain, this limitation also becomes a safety feature in large-scale nuclear plants. Given that the reaction does not continue on its own and the fuel supplied is also minimal, nuclear fusion technology thus ticks all the boxes of an ideal, safe, reliable, abundant and non-polluting fuel that could power the world in the near future. Although attempts to carry out our fusion reactions on Earth are touted as replicating those on the Sun, they are not. The reactions on the Sun are sustained under conditions of enormous density and gravitational confinement of plasma, which is not feasible in the reactors built on Earth. Whereas the Sun fuses hydrogen to produce helium, artificial reactors on Earth need to use heavier isotopes of hydrogen, such as deuterium and tritium. This creates the problem of neutron streams being released during the process, while increasing the radioactive nature of materials used in the reactor. The Jet Fusion Reactor, which was recently decommissioned in the UK, has an estimated 3,000 cubic meters of radioactive waste. The decommissioning effort is estimated to cost 300 million US dollars and is expected to be completed only by 2040. With ITER being a much larger reactor, the radioactive waste could be 10 times larger, even though the decay is expected to be completed in a few decades. Another downside of fusion reactors is parasitic power consumption. 
Since nuclear fusion can only occur at extremely high temperatures, a large part of the energy produced by a reactor will likely be used to keep the plasma at elevated temperatures for a longer duration. As fusion reactions begin to be sustained for longer durations, energy-intensive cooling mechanisms needed to protect equipment will also be run simultaneously, thereby increasing the power expenditure. This brings us to the important question of whether generating energy via fusion reaction is viable. It is clear that nuclear fusion is not a viable source of energy at its current state of development. For it to be commercially viable, the Q value of fusion energy must reach 25. This appears to be far off target right now, but may not be completely unattainable as well. Achieving a net energy gain from a nuclear fusion reaction took more than a century, but further progress in increasing this number may not need the same timeline. If energy singularity's achievements in this year tell us anything, it is that great strides are being made in nuclear fusion technology and that was impossible a few years ago is achievable today and can be scaled tomorrow. One could also argue whether nuclear fusion technology deserves the time and attention it is given. The investments and research time dedicated to this technology could have been used to further improve wind or solar energy technology, which is already powering grids today. But wind and solar were also unviable technologies half a century ago, and only sustained effort has brought them to where they are today. A similar fate perhaps awaits nuclear fusion technology as well, and could open the doors to clean energy of tomorrow. Remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell to stay updated with our latest content. And while you're here, why not check out another one of our exciting videos? Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.